Well, welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth but Heavenly Minded. I'm your host, Irvish, and today I have a story for all my uh, Jewish friends out there, or out here, I should say. Uh, and this story is about a Jew and from a Jew. Uh, the Jewish faith uh, has a lot of information about God. Uh, but sometimes even when we get information uh, from the source uh, and the oracles of God were given to the Jewish people. But uh, throughout the years, uh, false teachings have creeped in, and uh, like in any religion, and I'm not just picking on Jewish people, I'm picking on uh, everybody of all faiths. It's... Uh, seems to be uh, a global thing, not just uh, one nation or one group, ethnic group. So don't get me wrong. Okay, with that said, let's uh, let's just get into our story. The title of our story is, uh, Where is the Blood? You know, it takes blood uh, to uh, save us, because it tells us in the Bible that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And all through the Old Testament, the Jewish uh, scriptures, it uh, talks about uh, sacrifices and blood shedding and everything that pointed forward to an ultimate sacrifice. And uh, we all need a, we need a Savior. And we need a Savior that will offer up blood to God for our sins to pay the price. Okay, with that said, let us uh, just get into our story here. Got to kind of find it here. There it is. Okay, where is the blood? Well, the author of this story starts out by saying, I was born in the Holy Land nearly 70 years ago. As a child, I was taught to read the law and the, and the Psalms and the prophets, and I attended the synagogues and learned Hebrew from the rabbis. At first I believed what I was told, that our ours was the true and only religion. But I grew older, and studying the law more intensely, I was impressed by the place the blood had in all the ceremonial outlines there. And you'll find it throughout the Old Testament. And I was equally impressed by the utter absence of the traditions in modern Jew Judaism. Again and again, I read Exodus 12 and Leviticus 16 and 17, and the latter chapters especially made me uh, tremble as I thought of the great day of atonement and the place the blood had there. Day and night, one verse would ring in my ears, it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Leviticus 17, 11. I know I had broken the law. I needed atonement. Year after year, on that day, I beat my chest as I confessed my need of it, but it was to be made by blood, and there was no blood. So the question is, where is the blood? In my distress, at last, I opened my heart and I learned uh, and respected Rabbi. He told me that God was angry with his people. Jerusalem was in the hands of the Gentiles, and the temple was destroyed, and the Muslim mosque was reared up in its place. The only spot on earth where we dare share the blood of sacrifices according to Deuteronomy 12 and Leviticus 17, was described, desecrated, I'm sorry, and our nation scattered. That was why there was no blood. God had himself closed the way to carrying out the solemn service of that great day of atonement. Now we must turn to the Talmud and rest on the instructions and trust in the mercy of God and the merits of our fathers. 
Okay, that's what I was told. Well, I tried to be satisfied, but couldn't. Something seemed to say that the law was unaltered, even though our temple was destroyed. Nothing else but blood could atone for the soul. We didn't dare shed blood for atonement other than in the place the Lord had chosen. There was, there we were left without any atonement. So what hope do we have? This thought filled me with horror. In my distress, I uh, counseled many other rabbis. I had only one great question. Where can I find a blood of atonement? Didn't God say, when you eat the, uh, the matzka, uh, an elder Jew, Jewish man said during the Passover week, my Jewish brothers, you will have to put away all leaven from your house. You will have to eat the matzka, the unleavened wafer, and the roasted lamb. You will attend the synagogue service and carry out the rituals as directed in the Talmud. But you forget, my brothers, that you have everything but that which Jehovah required first of all. He did not say, when I see the leaven put away, or when I see you eat the masta, or the lamb, or go to the synagogue. But his word was, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Exodus 12, 13. Well, as my brothers, you can substitute nothing for this. You must have blood, blood, blood. That's what the Bible says. Blood. It is an awful word for one who reserves, the, uh, reveres the, the Talmud and yet has no sacrifice. It constantly speaks about the blood, but the blood is missing in the uh, Judea belief of today. It's gone, but we need it. God's answer to my search I did find the answer. One night I was walking down one of the narrow streets of the city when I saw a sign announcing a meeting for Jews. <laughs> Courteous, I made me go in. Just as I took a seat, I heard the man say, The blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, seven. It was my first introduction to Christianity, but I listened breathlessly, as the speaker told how God had declared that without the shedding of blood there's no remission, Hebrews 9.22, but that he had given his only begotten son, the Lamb of God, to die, and all who trust in his blood are forgiven, all their iniquities. This was the Messiah of Isaiah 53. This was the suffering of Psalms 22. Ah, my brothers, I had followed the blood. I had found the blood uh, of atonement at last. I trusted it. And now I love to read the New Testament along with the old. And I see how all the shadows of the law are fulfilled in Jesus. His blood had been shed for sinners. It has satisfied God, and it is the only way of salvation for either Jew or Gentile. Well, have you found a blood of atonement that poured from Jesus' side after he said, It is finished? Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. That was said by a Jew, John the Baptist. Back in John 129, God said, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Exodus 12, 13. Well, with that said, I'm going to end my podcast today, and I hope you really listen to what I said. So, where is the blood? The blood was shed at Calvary many, many years ago. 
and uh, it was Jesus' blood. And that's the blood for both Jew and Gentile. Well, with that said, I'm just going to tell you, pick up your Bible and read it, both the New Testament and Old Testament. They both point you to God, and they they work. They coincide together. Uh, what is uh, told us in the Old Testament is revealed in the New Testament. It explains it, and it, anybody can understand it if they really, really want to. Don't read the Bible to judge the Bible, but let the Bible judge you, and you'll find the answer to salvation. With that said, I'm going to end right now, and uh, just have a good day. Lord bless. And I, bless, I just pray for all my Jewish brothers and friends out there. Okay, bye now.